Hello all YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this October snowfall forecast for September 24th, 2020. Before I get on today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So today isn't necessarily an, a forecast for the month of October, but this is going to be taking a deeper look into the snowfall because I know a lot of times, like like at least for me, like like during August and September, I'm in hurricane mode, and then there's no like adjustment period for me. Once October starts, especially into November, I'm in snow mode. All right, so we're going to be taking a look at kind of like the snowfall forecast for October. Who has some chances to see some snow, and really who has some lower chances, right? Who may not see snow. During October, and keep in mind it's early, so if you don't see snow in October, it's not the end of the world or anything. We're gonna be taking a look and also some uh, pattern changes as well. All right, so we're gonna get into it here with the CFS model. You might be thinking, okay, what's so special about this? All right, when I click this right arrow, you're gonna see a lot of change, and there it is. Wow, the entire east, I would say pretty much, yes, the eastern half of the United States is engulfed with cold air here. And actually, some of the colder anomalies can be found in the southeast. So the southeast can actually be the furthest below average by as much as 5 degrees Celsius. So heck, that's pretty much saying 10 degrees Fahrenheit below average. It could even be more than that in some areas. Meanwhile, the western half of the United States is 7 to 9 plus Celsius degrees above average, which is like 14 to almost 20 Fahrenheit. Uh, why? Because I'll be showing you the jet stream patterns as well. And this does have a, you know, a... Does this big influence on who could see some snow potentially during the, even the first week of October? This is from October 1st through October 8th. So, again, the first week of October here. All right. Now, you notice though, by the 8th to the 15th, we got some, you know, some average temperatures for the southeast, but a lot more, I think, more warmer air starts coming back. This could be just the CFS model talking here. All right. Now, we take a look at the precipitation. Now, this is right now. Here's the first week of October. That's the only thing. Right? What we have on our side to increase our chances for snow is the cold air. But what's not on our side is going to be the precipitation. You can see it's pretty dry. All right? it, and that, that's not like not like horrible like down the way down here, but it, because it's some slightly drier conditions. So what we need to get some snow in October, especially for those northern uh, tier regions, is we need that cold air and the moist air to, to be in place at the same time. Because if we don't have moist air, that's not really going to help our chances. So that was the CFS model. I'm actually going to the GFS model here. And I'm actually going to load up the relative humidity. All right. And kind of go through and see if we can get some cold air in the eastern United States. Can we get some good relative humidity? As you can see along the Great Lakes regions, this is October 8th, for example. Actually, 8 p.m. on the 7th. We have some really high relative humidity. All right. And that could be the reason. All right. We got the high pressure that could be drawing some moisture out of the Atlantic potentially. So maybe the Great Lakes region. We get some moisture to set up there. Remember, don't necessarily look at the dew points because dew points, right, they're going to be low this time of year. They're going to start going down a little bit. The relative humidity is good because it gives out that moisture. It tells you the moisture content in relation with the temperature. So I think it's very helpful. Um, so, but again, going through, you really don't see much. Now, however, something does develop on October 3rd here. We do get some more relative humidity through Kentucky and Tennessee Valley, but I think that's a little bit too far south of those regions to see snow, especially in October. But what you want to pay attention to is, is all this moisture that comes across the Great Lakes region. That is what you want to pay attention to because those regions can get some snowfall during the month of October if conditions line up correctly. So looking at the October, now this is from the Climate Prediction Center. I do think they have a little bit of a warm bias personally, um, but they are calling for some warmer conditions actually for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast as well as the Southwest region, but pretty much the entire United States, with the exception of the Northwest US and Southeastern parts of Alaska. Those are the only two regions they put in equal chances, meaning, okay, it can go either way. Now the precipitation, I like, the, I, I personally, I like their precipitation outlook better. I think it's a lot more accurate than their temperature outlooks. 
Um, so, but look at this. Northwest United States. Oops, wrong uh, drawing tool. Uh, Northwest United States, some above average precipitation. So maybe some cooler temperatures, maybe some above average precipitation. Meanwhile, the central and southern United States is going to be drier. Then maybe the peninsula of Florida, maybe Savannah. Um, maybe those regions could see some uh, wetter conditions as well, as well as even parts of western Alaska. All right, so let's take a look now at the jet stream pattern. I know we're dying to know that jet stream pattern because that really does help determine the, like how the cold air comes in. And you can see it starting to develop already. This is September 27th. All right, and watch this. Look how low that jet stream goes. Now, if you were to go to the Weather Channel, let's say the Weather Channel is going to give a random example and go to, let's say, your 10-day forecast. Okay, you want to see how cold the temperatures are going to get, say, the first week of October. Since it, it's more than a week out, um, sometimes Weather Channel, I've noticed that, like, a week out, they're just going to give you a bunch of average-looking temperatures. But once you get closer, like, once we actually get to the first week of October, you'll see, actually, the forecast for the Weather Channel get more accurate. I've noticed that when you go farther, if you, if you were to go look in the Weather Channel, for example, and go, like, two weeks like two weeks farther out in time, like I noticed that the temperatures look very average. And then once I come to that date two weeks later, it looks a lot different. Not anybody's fault. I'm just saying that's that that's how the forecasts look when you get too far out. All right, but I will be showing you the GFS model and showing you guys how cold the temperatures could get. All right, but here's a here's a jet stream. This is on September 28th, uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Look at this funnel of cold air right down through Kansas and Oklahoma. It's a big dip of the jet stream here. And notice, here we go, through September 30th, then it kind of retreats north. That's kind of like, like our first little shot of cool air. Maybe a little storm develops to the south, right? Maybe, I, I'm not saying it's going to produce any snow, but just a little storm system could develop potentially. All right, then that retreats north. So that first batch of cold air doesn't really make it to the United States. It kind of shoots up through the Ohio Valley, so it's really only these regions that get impacted by the first batch of cool air, right? And you can, even right now, even on the 30th right here, you can still see the gestion goes down pretty far, right? You got to good nice chunk of cold air in the northern plains but look at this boom look how it comes down through the ohio valley and eventually this will be making its way through the eastern united states during the first week of october now this is a snowfall forecast so before i continue with the other maps on this video i'm going to be showing you my snowfall forecast for october and how i think it, how i think it could play out all right so here is my october snowfall forecast Right, so since I mentioned, like as you saw from the Climate Prediction Center map, you saw some average to maybe even slightly below average temperatures and also some more precipitation. So possibly the Northwest United States, you could see some slightly above average snowfall for October, potentially, especially in those mountainous regions. Obviously, the immediate coastline like Washington, Oregon, probably not going to see really much snowfall for October, but it's above average, meaning there is a chance as well. Um, even the Great Lakes, right? Actually some of the most snowfall for the Great Lakes region can come both in October, November, as well as maybe even late March, as well as April. Why? Because that's when the Great Lakes water temperatures get a lot warmer. All right. So if those Great Lakes water temperatures are warm with cold air at 5,000 feet flowing over it, that's when you get that lake effect done. That's how it all gets started. So the Great Lakes region, I highlighted just the Great Lakes coastline itself, but obviously the Great Lakes region in there could see some above average snowfall. And then for the southwest, we know it's going to be with that La Nina pattern. Even the south central, it could be a little bit below average with our snowfall because of that La Nina pattern, the way the jet stream could um, dip down. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be warm in this region. I mean, it will be. But I'm saying as for October, we could still get a nice jet stream dip with some cooler air. But I'm talking about the snowfall forecast for that region it could be below average. So exactly how cold could we get? All right, so here's the GFS model. I start from the first day of October here at 8 o'clock in the morning. You might notice this. Look at North Dakota and Minnesota. Temperatures between 25 and 32 Fahrenheit, all right, on the first day of October at about 8 o'clock in the morning or so. So already, you can see we're getting some colder. And even look at this. We're dropping into the extreme lower 40s, even some upper 30s, getting down into Ohio and Pennsylvania, but especially on an Appalachian chain here, it could be getting down to the mid-30s. Um, on Oct October 1st in the morning. So we're talking about Thursday morning here. All right? Actually, exactly a week from now. Now we're going to take a look at uh, Friday morning. All right? So this is October 2nd in the morning. Look how much farther south the cold air gets. It gets a lot more expansive. We're talking about temperatures getting as low as 24 or 25 all the way down to Wisconsin here. Um, also, the, the uh, Smoky Mountains look a little bit cooler, maybe 34 to 36. So we're getting a little bit lower. 
All right, now, but notice this though. This is two o'clock in the afternoon, right? That's supposedly warmest time of the day. Some locations in Minnesota won't break 39 degrees. They won't even get to 40. I have a lot of 40s here for the uh, Great Lakes region, Northern Plains. Even now the interior Northeast could be in the 40s and 50s. Now the coastal Northeast, for now, you're just seeing a little bit warmer relief. We're talking about like anywhere from 62 to 67, but the interior Northeast looks a lot different here. 40, upper 40s and lower 50s here at two o'clock in the afternoon. All right, so now we're going to skip here to the October 3rd, so this is Saturday morning, October 3rd, at 8 o'clock, that warmest, that coldest time of the day. Duluth could get down to 24 degrees. You see we're dropping below freezing. So we could see some freeze watches and freeze warnings go out in like maybe seven days from now in advance to this. Now, also notice, look out, now frost and freeze don't necessarily have to be below 32, right? Um, depending on like how, like in the south, it may only take 36 or 38 degrees to prompt a freeze warning. But in the north, it may take 31 or 29 to prompt a freeze warning just because how different the climate and the agriculture is in those regions. All right, but we're talking about 34 degrees as far south as the Missouri and Arkansas state line. All right, so this is definitely a very, very cold, it's a very cold wave here. And to be honest with you, I'm actually kind of excited. I like the cold, I like the snow, in case you didn't know. But now you know something new about me, in case you didn't know that already. I like the cold and the snow, so I'm very excited to talk about this winter season. But look at this. We're talking about 30s as far south as northern Alabama and Georgia. We're talking about below freezing for potentially the Appalachian Mountains. So these are the areas where you see a lot of cold, all right, and if we get enough moisture in there, I do think all right, that some of the Great Lakes regions in here, especially the areas that are below 32, could see some snow all right, uh, in the coming weeks or so. So look at the European mountain here, kind of like another look at that 500 millibar geopotential heights. You can see there's kind of like your first batch that comes through, comes through very late September, or right, maybe even the first day of October. So that retreats on northward, and then you get your, your more serious plunge that comes down through the eastern United States. It's not going to be like a like a ice age or anything. It's not going to be that cold. But I think we could de definitely be, especially like when you wake up in the morning, maybe 10 degrees or so below average. And it's definitely going to be a like, little bit of a chill than what you're used to. All right, so look at the European model here. There you go. October, actually, this is 8 p.m. on October 1st. Look at all this cold air. It's there back to the west. All right. And then comes across the Great Lakes. So again, this is the cold air at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. So... If, we, if those Great Lakes water temperatures are still warm and we get some cold air at 5,000 feet, we could see some snow potentially crank out, especially if it happens to come in the early morning because in the early morning, that's when those temperatures have the greatest chance to go below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, here's the Climate Prediction Center, kind of like they're saying the risk, they kind of like they, they do these certain risks, like they have one for temperature, precipitation, snow, and so on. So let's just take a look at the temperatures and take a look at the slight, moderate, to even high confidence of cold temperatures right now in the eastern United States. Um, and actually, you have a time period, like anywhere in this light blue region, maybe the 1st through the 6th of October, we can see some, you know, some slightly cooler temperatures, right? Not too bad. That more moderate stuff could be in place the 1st through the 5th of October. And then in that darkest blue region, right there in the Smoky Mountains, Appalachian Mountains, the 2nd and the 3rd could be your two coldest days. You can see the worst of conditions. And the opposite could be said for places like California, Arizona, where you can see more slight chance of some maybe some above normal temperatures. Nothing excessive, all right? It's not excessive heat necessarily, um, but we do have the chance to see some slightly above average temperatures in that region. And it's not gonna help the wildfire situation either. Now precipitation, nothing's been posted. So maybe it's not nothing too out of ordinary with the precipitation, maybe some slightly above average precipitation there for the lower part of Alaska. Now, before we wrap up here, taking a look at the actual snowfall forecast, not too much in sight, however, Look at these batches of snow. It's getting pretty close to the United States here in southern parts of Canada. Maybe some more mountainous rocky regions could see some snowfall. This is just going through October 4th, right? If I were to extend this, it um, doesn't go any farther than this because the European model goes 10 days. But if I were to go extend out through, say, October 8th, 9th, or 10th, it'd look a little bit different. And the GFS model, which also only goes out 10 days on this website, again, not, the rocky regions and northern Rockies could see some snowfall, but they're also calling for maybe some traces of snow through Minnesota, Wisconsin, maybe one to three inches for Marquette, Michigan, and also a nice big uh, dome of snow up there in uh, parts of eastern Canada, southeastern Canada. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Hopefully we'll be updating on this. Some snowfall could be coming during October. Like I said, it's going to be more of a cooler and drier setup. That's how La Nina usually plays out for the fall. So if we can get that quarter to be in place and a little bit of moisture get thrown in there, 
maybe either from a tropical system because you remember Superstorm Sandy, right? That's Superstorm Sandy is what produced those blizzards in the mountainous regions of the Mid Atlantic and Northeast. All right, because we had moisture from a tropical system combined with cold air. So maybe we get a similar setup for October because October we can see a lot of cold air, but at the same time, it's a lot of hurricanes. So if we get some moisture and some cold air to line up. We could see some snow in the northern parts of the U.S. through October. So thank, thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dwarder Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.